What's up guys? It's been a little while. I broke my ankle and you think that that would probably be a good time to, you know, maybe make some videos. You're absolutely right, but I don't want to hear about it because I didn't do it. So um, I just came up with a new idea for a video and I wanted to review this guy and this guy. This is the 510 Freerider Pro and this is the 510 Trailcross LT. Both are flat mountain bike shoes. Both have a lot of similarities, but also are used for a lot of different reasons. I will never do a review of a product I've not personally tested enough to where I feel comfortable talking about it, because I think that that's horseshit. Um, people that are just like, oh, first impressions, this is what it looks like, I like these features. I've worn these, I've ridden in them, I've walked in them, I've taken them on trips, I've done plenty in both. We're gonna talk about the pros and cons of each. I wanna tell you what I prefer for what, price points, and which shoe you should buy. To begin with, I was never really a huge flats guy. I never have been. I grew up racing, so like on my trail bike, I always have clipless pedals. Um, naturally, I have worn these Shimano shoes for like, I don't even know how long. <laughs> they have withstood the true test of time. For flats, I've always been a Vans guy. Like I've always worn Vans waffle shoes because they are phenomenal for gripping pedals and I, you know, I'll wear them dirt jumping and all of that. But uh, I thought it was time to try out some shoes. Like I know like my friends all have five pens. They've always talked about it. They're like, well, you don't need clips if you've got five pens because it's so grippy. And I'm like, shut the fuck up. It's definitely not the same thing. Um, so I had to try it out for myself. And uh, as always guys, like and subscribe. It helps me out a ton. It gives me that tiny bit of motivation I need to just make another video. Um, I do think it's pretty fun, even though I'm sitting in this hot ass garage that's like 200 degrees on a summer day, um, but I love it. So we're gonna start with the Freerider Pro. Just as an overview for this shoe to begin with, it's definitely a beefier shoe. Like it is so stiff, like that is so hard to fold. I can't even barely bend the back of the sole. Um, this stealth rubber is super intense. Really good shoe. I've been riding it for probably about eight months. You know, it looks pretty new because I'm still not a flats guy. So I ride it occasionally, mostly dirt jumps. A um, little bit of trail riding here and there. But so far, so good. Like, I do really enjoy the shoe. Even though it's really, really thick and beefy, it doesn't feel like too much shoe to me. And that was something I was really worried about. And that's why I like the feel of Vans is because they are really thin and you can feel the pedal really well. So for things like dirt jumping, I do kind of like that feel maybe a little bit better than these, but for things like trail riding, where you're like taking a lot of pressure on feet, a lot of movement, shaking around, you know, potentially taking your foot off, kicking some rocks, all that kind of stuff. This is great, like absolutely phenomenal. Every part of the shoe is so beefy. This toe is maybe the stiffest part. It like feels like a freaking metal toe and it's like, oh my God, it's so stiff. It feels great. We've got the like pleather sides, um, obviously the stealth rubber, which is just phenomenal. So grippy, I don't understand it. I have pretty narrow feet and these aren't too wide for me, so that's always good. Um, I always have trouble finding shoes that fit me really well or that can lace up tight enough, but these things seem to have done the job really well. Don't want my roommates to come home and see me making YouTube videos. So yeah, for pros, I think that kind of covers it. Like I really do enjoy this shoe so far. It's been, it's been really great. So the cons of this shoe, it's kind of awkward to walk around in. Naturally, that's gonna be the case with any big shoe. I don't think that these are really any better to walk around in. Maybe they are a little bit less flat and maybe that's just because I've used them a lot so they kind of roll a little better. These things are pretty, pretty much straight as an arrow. So they do kind of like beep boop, beep boop. And that's a little bit annoying. I think the first time I wore them, they were really squeaky and like obviously the brand new stealth rubber is like, every time you take a step, it's like ee, ee. So there is a little bit of a break-in period. That's just gonna be the case with any stiffer shoe. It's gonna be kind of weird for a little while, but once it breaks in and it starts getting a little flexy, that's when it starts feeling the best. So I think I'm kind of in that sweet spot right now where I've beaten them up a little bit and I've worn them around. Like The other thing is I, I think that 510s, at least in their like skate style shoes, Still have a little ways to go as far as looking like super, super good. <laughs> I always thought they looked a little bit goofy. They're just kind of bulbous and round and I don't know, it's just not quite my style, but I'm also coming from being a Vans guy and I think that they have you know, their style really down. Obviously, like everything I say, it's designed that way for a reason. I don't hate the look of it by any means. I think it's a good looking shoe. I just think the 510 is a little bit more to uh, think about when it comes to the design of the shoe and making it just look a little bit less 
dorky. This model is a lot better. I just know like the old 510 flats just look so, so bad in my opinion. But yeah, so that's this guy. Um, we're gonna talk about the Trailcross LT. I haven't tried the Trailcross Mid. I am a huge fan of high tops though. I do love them. I love riding in them. These are like pseudo high tops. I think the angle protection is nice. This to me has a very, very different purpose. This to me is not by any means something that you should, you know, necessarily take to the bike park or do like a lot of big riding on it that's like really rough. To me, this is like your perfect everyday trail shoe. So <laughs> I broke my ankle literally days before I got these in the mail. Uh, well, I had a freaking boot on. And I just wore the right side, but I was wearing it, you know, walking around, going on like small hikes, uh, just kind of testing them out, breaking them in. And like, this is a shoe that I could wear every single day and not be annoyed by it. Like, don't get me wrong, like the sole is still so stiff, um, a little bit less than the Freerider because of the toe box. The toe box on this is a little bit bigger and it goes, you know, it goes all the way over the top versus this one where it's kind of soft in the toes to get a little bit more breathability. Um, and so with that, you get the flexibility too. And that is super nice for just walking. Like that's something that I find so huge because like I said, growing up racing, when you're always wearing cleats on your shoes and walking around, it's like wearing ski boots and it's so annoying. And so these have been sweet and they're, they're designed with trail running in mind actually. So it's kind of like a combo, like half these shoe um, where you could really wear these trail running. You could wear them hiking. The rubber might be a little bit beefy for trail running. I think that it is, you know, it's still really stiff down in like the arch of your foot and uh, your heel, but I've had no, no real complaints. Like awesome shoe. Um, just got my first few rides on it the other day actually. And I'm like super stoked guys. Just for like easy trail riding, like I said, the breathability is awesome. So there's like all of this nice mesh that goes around from inside of your foot over your toes to outside of your foot and stops right about your ankles where they have this extra ankle protection on the sides. You also have this mesh in the back. Um, it's definitely a little bit thicker back here because they have, you know, the raised ankle guard um, or I guess a Keeley guard. Um, but there is a little bit more mesh here so that it does get a little breathability. Well, it's still really stiff and hard here. So if you take an ankle hit, it's not gonna hurt, but it might be a little bit less hot there. Again, they have the stealth rubber, so insanely grippy, like kind of makes me wanna ride flats more. Just for simplicity's sake, and it's nice to be able to just take your foot off, drag it in the dirt, whatever. But I would gladly wear these day to day. I'd wear them hiking, I'd wear them on literally everything. If you were to buy just one shoe for riding, I would get these for sure. With that being said though, some cons of this thing are definitely gonna be how soft certain parts of it are. I wish that I have tested this for more than a couple months now because I'm guessing that this mesh, like it, it seems really durable, but in comparison to the Freerider, which is like, you know, completely covered in this pleather, this is gonna get torn up for sure. Like if you snag pedals, if you snag a uh, tree, if you snag, because you wouldn't snag a tree. You know what I mean though. If you're hitting stuff um, and constantly beating this up, I do think that this will start to tear um, because it is relatively thin. Like I can, I can see through it. But obviously that's so you stay a little bit less hot on the trail, so you're less sweaty, so you can do more all day rides in this um, and then also go walk around after. With that being said too, because it's so thin, your feet get super dirty. Not that that's a big issue because if you're gonna go biking, you're planning on getting dirty anyways, but it is kind of gross. Like I remember just taking off my shoes and like you just have this nice sweet dirt line all the way around. Again, not really a big deal, not something that should stop you from buying this, but just to keep in mind. The other cool thing about this is that, that, like I said, I do have really narrow feet. I think the platform on this is inherently a little skinnier to make it more comfortable um, for longer days. Uh, it kind of grabs your foot a little bit better than the free rider does. This, this feels more like a skate shoe. This feels more like a tennis shoe. Obviously you can tell with the design that that's the point, but the cool thing is that the first time I rode in these, I had this huge ankle brace and it fit in here no problem. And like, I could not fit it into my, uh, my clipless shoes, which was like, oh, maybe I should try the trail crosses then. And um, it was awesome. It did so well. Both shoes actually fit really true to size. These are 11s. I normally wear a 10 and a half. Riding shoes, I tend to go up a little bit on them just to be safe because you really don't want to have a shoe that's too small. With that being said though, these are probably a little bit roomy, so you could totally get the right size and it should be good to go. So price points on these bad boys. Trail Cross LT retails at about 140. Freerider Pro 150. Now, which one should you buy? That, and I know you're like, why did I watch this video if he's gonna tell me I should decide? 
shut the fuck up and do your own research. You can listen to me. Should you listen to me and purchase? That's your call. I would go for this shoe personally. I don't do lots of big days at the bike park. I don't do, you know, lots of free riding. I don't do all that crap. If you're like most people and you just like to go ride bikes for fun, go hit some trails, maybe some dirt jumps. If you're looking for just that one shoe that's gonna be your do it all, riding shoe, walk around shoe, everything, trail cross is your, your do it all. If you spend lots of days at the bike park, if you're riding downhill bikes, maybe if you race, hands down, get the free rider. They're just for different uses. Like, obviously, they're two different shoes, and you came here to kind of understand which one you should buy. If you're like me and you have sweaty ass feet and they get hot, trail cross. If you're like me and you like to ride dirt jumps and maybe bike park, free rider. This thing is basically your trail shoe. You can wear this on big rides, short rides, walking around town, do whatever you need. I wouldn't ride this shoe on trails. It just doesn't feel like it, it's a little bit too stiff, a little bit bulky, not super breathable. But then if you're about to do, you know, double black descents at like a bike park, I don't know if I would want to wear this shoe either because there really isn't much protection. If you fall, you could hurt your foot a lot easier than you could in this thing. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, I know you hate hearing that, but those like 15 subscribers I have, you guys crush it. You give me more motivation. We're gonna do some more honest garage 100 degree reviews.